In this clip I will discuss a test for concavity on convexity and discuss the relationship between concavity and convexity and the second derivative of a function. So suppose we have a function defined on some open interval i and suppose that we know that this function is twice differentiable and uh, that the second derivative is always positive. If it's always positive, then the function is convex on, on the open interval i. Also, if the second derivatives are always negative, then f is concave on i. Yeah, a proof goes as follows. Suppose that we look at the first one, the other one goes, it's just merely the same. So we'll only, we'll show the first part. So suppose we have always positive second derivatives. And uh, take an a in this open interval. And we are about to show that the function value uh, on this interval is always larger or equal than the linear approximation in A, which is given by f A plus f prime A times x minus A. And I realize that the derivative exists when we assume a second derivative. Okay, take an x in I and suppose that x is larger than A. Now, uh, this is the first case, and uh, in, in case x uh, is smaller than a, we we'll do something alike. Now, we may apply the mean value theorem on the interval ax. So there should be a c in ax such that fx minus fa equals the f prime c times x minus a, or the difference of fx and fa equals the derivative in some point c in between x and a times x minus a. Okay, since we assume that the second derivative is always larger than zero, this means that the f prime of which, which is a derivative, so the f double prime is a derivative of f prime, so since its derivative the derivative of derivative is always larger than zero. This means that the derivative itself is a strictly increasing function on i. And since c is chosen in the open interval ax, it means that a is smaller than c, so that the derivative in a is also strictly smaller than the derivative in c. So this means that if we multiply x minus a with the derivative in a, that this term is smaller than the term f prime in c times x minus a. Right? These are both positive numbers. The, the derivatives are positive and x minus a is positive. Now we combine both equations, star and double star. Then we see that f a plus f prime a, the derivative in a, times x minus a is smaller, here we use the double star, yeah, is smaller than f a plus the derivative in c times x minus a. And this one equals yeah, first, so now we use the single star equality and this one equals fx. So what it says is fx is larger than f a plus f prime a times x minus a. Yeah, if x is smaller than a, we do something similar. Just pick c and xa. 
Yeah, we're going to apply the mean value theorem again, so we may choose C and XA such that the difference of fx minus fa equals the derivative of the function in C times x minus A. So now we know that the derivative in C is smaller than the derivative in A. Right, since c is smaller than a, and also since x minus a is smaller than zero, then we see that f a plus f prime a, which is f prime a, is smaller than f c, but x minus a is now negative, so we get on the left hand side f a plus f prime a times x minus a is smaller than f a plus f prime c times x minus a, but this latter term equals f x. So now again we have f x is larger than f a plus f prime a times x minus a. And this holds for x is smaller than a. Now you may question why is there a equality sign in a definition of a convex function? Well, this is just uh, if we would plug in the value x equal to a then of course we get fa equals fa.